Hello again everyone and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video I'm going to show you the updated installer from Ubuntu 2404 and I'll show you the entire installation process. In fact, I'm already finished. This is the installation right here. So what I'm going to do in this video is go back in time and I'm going to show you how I installed it. But before we get into today's video, I just want you to know that the official Learn Linux TV shop has just been updated with brand new products and you should check it out. Inside the shop, you'll find distro-themed shirts, bags, drinkware, and more. And there's some other surprises there as well. For example, I've just introduced a mouse pad that doubles as a Tmux cheat sheet. How cool is that? So check out the shop at merch.learnlinux.tv, or you could check out the merch shelf right here on YouTube. You could get yourself something really cool and support Linux learning at the same time, so it's a win-win. So buy some Linux swag and install Linux on your computer. It's going to be a fun day. Speaking of fun, it's time to dive into Ubuntu 2404 and check out the installation process. So let's go ahead and get started. On the first screen, all it's asking us to do is choose our language for the installer. In my case, English is selected, even though it really doesn't look all that selected. You can see that there's an orange highlight on the word English right there, which tells us that that's what's selected. So what you do is select your language, and then once you've done that, you can click Next to continue. Next, we have an accessibility screen. So if you need any of these technologies enabled right here, then you have a chance to do so if that's something that you want to do. Once you're finished with this, though, you can go ahead and click Next to continue. On this screen, we're choosing our keyboard layout. If your preferred keyboard layout is something else, you can go ahead and choose that here and then click Next. At this point, the installer has detected that I am not connected to the internet. And I do recommend that we connect to a network. Ubuntu isn't going to be all that useful if we have no access to the internet. And we definitely don't want to install Ubuntu before we have a chance to make sure that we have internet access. But one thing I could say though, is the fact that we do have wireless networks here listed is a good sign. That means it was able to detect wireless networks in the first place. And the reason why we're checking this is because some Wi-Fi cards can be problematic in Ubuntu. So, that's why we want to make sure this is working before we install it. So we'll click connect. It's going to ask me for the password for my Wi-Fi access point. And then I'll click connect. It looks like we are connected now, so I'll click next. And what we can do here is set up an automated installation. But what I'm going to do is leave it on interactive installation. I'll click next. On this screen here, what we could do is choose the selection of apps that we want to start with. The default selection doesn't include all that many. So if you want something lean, then that's the one that you would choose. The extended selection includes other things that you may or may not need, such as an office suite, for example. I recommend that most people go ahead and choose this option here because it's not going to take up that much more hard drive space. And you could just ignore LibreOffice, for example, if you don't want to use it. But if you choose this option, you will have those applications available if you need them. So I'll click Next. And here it's giving us an option to install proprietary software if we need it. Proprietary software is referring to drivers that Ubuntu may not have direct access to. It's a long story. I do recommend that everyone check both of these boxes, though. Reason being, if you have any piece of hardware attached to your computer, or if you purchase a piece of hardware down the road that you plan to use with Ubuntu, this will give you a better chance of that hardware being supported. So there's virtually no reason at all whatsoever to not select these boxes. Anyway, we'll click Next. On this screen here, it's asking us how we would like to set up our disk. I'm going to choose the first option because the goal is to erase the disk and make Ubuntu the only operating system on the computer. This is a full install tutorial, so that's the one that I'll select. We do have some advanced features here that you could choose if you wanted to. For example, you could use LVM. I have an entire video that covers LVM if you're interested. We also have a ZFS option, so if you want to check out ZFS, you can choose that. I'm not going to choose that because that's experimental. You probably want to give that a little bit more time to become more stable. I just wanted you to be aware that those options exist. Anyway, I'll click Next. 
In here, we could choose which hard drive we want to install Ubuntu onto. Now, we probably shouldn't choose the flash drive that we booted from in order to launch the installer in the first place. And in my case, I only have this hard drive here. So by process of elimination, that's the one that it has to be for me. So here we get some information about the hard drive. It's a 512 gig hard drive, as you can see. Now, before continuing though, make sure you choose the correct hard drive because whichever one you choose is the one that's going to be completely wiped. Again, this is a full install tutorial. Anyway, I'll click next. And then we'll set up our user account. And this will be the primary user on the system. And I'll name mine ThinkPad. I think that's probably a good enough name. I like to simplify my username. And then I'll create a password. And then we could choose whether or not to require our password to log into the system. I recommend that you keep this checked unless you're setting up some sort of internet kiosk or something like that. We also have support for Active Directory as well. That's beyond the scope of this tutorial, but that might be something that I'll tackle in the future if that's something that you're interested in seeing. Anyway, just take a moment to double check all of the information that you have here. And then when you're ready, click next. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, but I wanted to let you know that I have a brand new Linux course available, and if you're looking to get certified, then this one is right up your alley. Over on Udemy, I've just launched my first ever certification prep course, and this one will teach you everything you need to know in order to pass the Linux Essentials exam and become certified through the Linux Professional Institute. And with over 200,000 certification holders, LPI is the first and largest vendor-neutral Linux and open source certification body. Any certification through LPI is a credential that will definitely be an asset to your career. And my brand new course is a perfect tool to help get you there. With my Linux Essentials course, you'll enjoy over 23 lessons that will teach you valuable Linux skills. Each video will keep you engaged while breaking down each and every topic into easy to understand concepts that will make even the most challenging topics seem simple. In addition, you'll be able to follow along with hands-on examples that will have you working directly with Linux commands and technologies. Even if you are not planning on becoming certified, the Linux Essentials course from Learn Linux TV is a great way to get into Linux in general. So even hobbyists will benefit from this course as well. Now don't worry though, this new Udemy course doesn't change any content that you've been enjoying here on YouTube. My new and completely separate venture on Udemy is designed to help boost your skills even further, and meanwhile, the videos here on YouTube will continue as they've been for over 10 years now. So check out my brand new Linux Essentials course and pass that exam. I would really appreciate it. Now, let's get back to the video. On this screen, what we're going to do is choose our geographic location. That helps set the time zone and things like that. You'll notice right now that the time is 1911, which is wrong. So what this should do is correct the time as soon as I click Next. So basically, this just makes sure that you're in the correct time zone. So I'll click Next. And notice that the time changed immediately. So now we can review our choices. And this just gives you an opportunity to back out of the process if you want to back up your system, if you forgot to do that, for example. But if you're ready to continue, you could click Install, which is what I'm going to do. All right, it looks like it's all set. So let's go ahead and restart and see how it went. And here we are at the login screen. So I'll click on my name. I'll type in my password. And here we are. So the first thing you'll see is this welcome screen. If you'd like, you could click view change log. And that'll tell you what's changed in this new release. And as you can see, it brings you to the release notes for Ubuntu 2404. I'll leave it up to you, but anyway, let's go through the welcome screen. Ubuntu Pro is free for up to five machines if that's something that interests you. One of the benefits is that it'll give you extended security support, for example. So if you plan on keeping this release installed until around 2034, well, you might want to check the enable box for this. I'll leave it up to you though. I'm going to skip it. I'll click next. I'll choose no. But if this is something that you want to send along to Ubuntu, you can go ahead and do that. And before anyone comments that Ubuntu is spying on you, you can click this box right here. 
and it'll give you all the information that it plans on sending them. So actually, all the information here, I don't really care if they have that information. And I did download it for free, so I will check this box here, may as well. I'll click Next, and then Finish. Anyway, now you have your very own Ubuntu 2404 installation that's all set and ready to go. And there you go. In this video, we installed Ubuntu 2404. I hope you enjoy your brand new installation, and I also hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please click that like button to let YouTube know how you felt about this video. But anyway, with that said, thank you so much for checking out this video, and I'll see you in the next video.